Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in one of the recent videos covering the discoveries from the James Webb Space Telescope, I discussed an unusual discovery of what the scientists refer to as red spiral galaxies. Galaxies that essentially resemble the Milky Way, but seem to be a lot redder, or sometimes even entirely red, in color. And not red because of the redshift or because they're really far away, but actually red completely naturally. Which, when it comes to our understanding of galactic evolution and how we believe galaxies form, does present a bit of a mystery. I would even go as far as to say this is one of the bigger mysteries from the James Webb Space Telescope discovered so far. And so in this video I wanted to talk a little bit more about what these galaxies are, why they are so unusual, what they represent, and why this is maybe a pretty big mystery that the scientists are going to be scratching their heads about for a pretty long time. And I guess let's start with the basics. So when it comes to galactic morphology, or basically the shapes of galaxies, you can generally, very roughly, divide them into two. We have the blue galaxies, which are very often spiral in shape, although in many cases don't have any shape at all, and are referred to as irregular galaxies, or are somewhat reddish or orangish in color. And very often these will be elliptical galaxies, or essentially galaxies that are somewhat symmetrical and somewhat spherical in shape with the color itself being the result of the star formation inside the galaxy. A typical elliptical galaxy like IC1101 right here, the largest most massive galaxy discovered, is basically reddish and really old. Or the stars here are somewhat old, with very few new stars being created. But spiral galaxies like the Cartwheel galaxy that you see right here, possess a lot of young stars and are blue in color. And this is essentially a basic fact about them. And so when the galaxies are born and when they're still being developed, or when they actually go through a lot of collisions and acquire a lot of new gas, such as NGC 1427 right here, they turn blue because of various star forming activity and eventually turn a little bit more red as a lot of the galactic gas escapes and eventually strips the galaxy from the material making new stars. Although in this case the stripping effect can actually happen for many other reasons. For example, we know that very powerful supermassive black holes that form quasars very often play a very important role in stripping galaxies of a lot of gas inside and thus preventing star formation as well. Although here the feedback mechanism is actually really complicated. Sometimes it can do the opposite, sometimes it can actually encourage star formation. But the main point is this. As galaxies age and as they lose a lot of the material inside, they slowly become a little bit more red and acquire a much older stellar population compared to younger blue galaxies. And so for example, the famous M87 galaxy that you see right here is one of these red galaxies. In this case, it's an elliptical red galaxy. Whereas the nearby Andromeda is a blue galaxy, which obviously suggests that it has a lot of younger stars and still has quite a lot of star formation. And so by studying the morphology or the shape of a typical galaxy, it becomes possible to study the process of galactic formation and of course galactic evolution. But there obviously are some exceptions. And here are some of these exceptions discovered by a very famous survey known as the Galaxy Zoo. In the last few years it's been capturing more and more of these red spiral galaxies, or basically spiral galaxies that resemble a typical elliptical galaxy in color, revealing that they also exist as well. So not all spiral galaxies are going to be blue in color. And for the most part, in the modern universe, basically within a few billion light years away from us, on average the scientists seem to find 2 out of every 100 or essentially 2% of all spiral galaxies seem to be red in color, some more red than others. I'll talk a little bit more about the importance of their properties in a few minutes, but let's actually talk about the important discovery from the James Webb. This is of course coming from the super famous SMAX J0723, one of the first images released by the James Webb. And here there was a really weird surprise, discovered billions of light years away from us. Extremely red spiral galaxies existing during the period of time known as the Cosmic Noon. This was around 10 billion years ago, and according to the modern observations, it actually represented the most active period of star formation. Or essentially, the vast majority of star formation happened around this time. So basically we expect a lot of blue galaxies during this period. This has been observed from a lot of different objects, and quite a few stars created during this time were discovered as well. But remember I mentioned that red galaxies represent pretty much the opposite a very low star formation. And it just so happens that statistically, because here the scientists only took a look at a very small sample of galaxies during the cosmic noon and actually discovered quite a few of these red spiral galaxies, 
it implies that they were much more common back then than they are today. And that is really, really strange, it actually doesn't add up at all. It means that for some reason, back in the days, 10 billion years ago, there were a lot more spiral galaxies, which by the way are very complex to begin with, that did not form any stars. Yet suddenly, 10 billion years later, the situation reversed. Now there are a lot of star-forming spiral galaxies and very few red galaxies. And by the way, on top of this, these were also some of the farthest spiral galaxies ever discovered. So this was a huge surprise and a huge mystery. Not only was the mystery of how exactly were these spirals created back in the days, but also why exactly were they not forming any stars anymore. And interestingly, these galaxies were originally detected by the Hubble and the Spitzer telescope, but as you can see, the resolution here was very low. These galaxies were barely visible. But thanks to the James Webb, we can finally see what's happening here. And so RS-13 and RS-14 represent the most extremely red galaxies ever found. Even much, much redder than anything we have in the local universe. Here's a pretty good visual comparison between a typical red galaxy in the modern universe and a typical blue spiral galaxy. But more importantly, it was definitively confirmed that at least one of these galaxies is essentially passive. It practically has no star formation at all. Other galaxies maybe have red color for some other reasons, but RS-14 is definitely passive. Yet it existed during the most active period of star formation. So yeah, what exactly is going on? Well, for now, one of the potential explanations is really in regards to the amount of dust present within the galaxies. There's still a chance that maybe they're extra red because of a huge amount of dust present inside the galaxy, causing the effect known as dust reddening, which would potentially explain what's going on. But even if that's the case, there's another problem here. This graph right here kind of shows you the overall decrease in numbers of well-established spiral galaxies as you look back in time. Specifically, galaxies containing what's known as a bar structure. These galactic bars are believed to be formed only in galaxies that have established themselves for a pretty long period of time. In other words, they have not experienced any major galactic collisions and have not been disturbed for billions of years. And because there are less collisions today than there were billions of years ago, we expect more galaxies to be well established and more galaxies to contain spiral bars. Which means that the observations kind of prove the theory here as well. This is going as far back as approximately 8 billion years. But intriguingly, if you actually look at some of these galaxies, specifically RS-14, it almost looks like it does possess a bar as well, as if it was a mature, settled galaxy. Now, it existed around the time the universe was about 4 to 5 billion years old, so there's maybe a slight chance that they did actually have enough time to mature and become a barred spiral galaxy, but there's also maybe another explanation here as well. This galaxy could be extremely massive. Other discoveries, looking at various spiral galaxies, generally found that supermassive spiral galaxies tend to acquire these bars much quicker than anything else. And more intriguingly, about half of all red spiral galaxies seem to contain bars as well. Whereas only about 14% of blue galaxies like the Milky Way contain these galactic bars. With the implication being red galaxies and more massive red galaxies seem to be well settled and also will most likely contain a galactic bar. With many other studies establishing that overall, it seems that the mass seems to matter most. More massive spiral galaxies are more likely to become red much quicker and are also more likely to acquire bar structures in the middle, which possibly implies that these are extremely massive spiral galaxies. And if so, would also create a problem of, okay, why are they so massive? And more importantly, why did they stop forming stars? To become so red, they would probably not have to have any star formation for at least a billion years. Now, it's definitely possible because the universe was already 4 to 5 billion years old, but why? This was the most active period in the universe. Why did these galaxies stop forming them? And while some of the other answers seem to come from other studies that discovered that a very large proportion of red spirals seem to be what's known as liners, low ionization nuclear emission line region. Or in more simpler terms, they do contain a somewhat active center where there is a supermassive black hole creating quite a lot of wind, but this wind by itself could potentially blow out a lot of gas from within the galaxy, thus stopping star formation. The Sombrero galaxy here is a pretty good example. And so maybe these are just spiral galaxies with a somewhat active central region, producing just the right amount of wind to essentially starve the galaxy of any star-forming gas, and thus eventually stop the star formation. Intriguingly, there's also a bit of a correlation between 
a relatively large bar, and the prevention of star formation in a galaxy containing such bar. Or at least that's the case for a lot of red spirals. About 70% of them seem to contain relatively large bars, and many of them have stopped producing stars as well. But the actual process of galactic starvation, or basically expulsion of the gas, probably happens because of what's known as bar instability. Or basically when the bar, that's actually quite gravitationally potent, and produces a lot of effects in the galaxy, for some reason becomes a little bit more unstable and possibly throws off a lot of gas to the outside. And so in this case, as the bar becomes more unstable, it causes some of the gas to eventually start leaving the galaxy, reducing the star formation. At least these are some of the modern explanations for what we're observing in these galaxies and for why we're observing no star formation in a lot of these barred spiral galaxies. But here's the thing, we still have no idea why so many were discovered 8 to 10 billion years ago in this image from the James Webb. Now here we're talking about proportionally speaking, in terms of the actual number it was not that many, but it still doesn't really currently make a lot of sense. It definitely suggests that the actual proportion of these galaxies during this period of time was much higher than 2% that we usually find around ourselves today. And so even though not a lot of studies have been talking about this so far, this is a pretty big discovery. This is actually a huge discovery, a mystery that currently has no actual resolution. But the only possible answer is that, once again, we just don't understand how galaxies form and evolve, and we still are missing something really crucial when it comes to the formation of spiral galaxies. Maybe these galaxies are really not formed the way we think they're formed. Or maybe something else needs to happen inside these galaxies for them to acquire certain properties we detect today. Although I guess important to mention here, it definitely does not validate any of the modern theories such as the Big Bang theory. That still stands. But it does create a bit of a problem when it comes to galactic evolution. Red spiral galaxies, despite being a rarity, are definitely a super important piece of this puzzle and will have to be studied much more thoroughly. But like, not by me, because all I do is really make videos, so someone else should do it. Anyway, on that note, once we discover something else, I'll definitely come back and talk more about this because this is a super exciting discovery. Check out previous videos in the description below, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.